you should join together when they're t in their troubles. Or anybody that separates himself from the Jewish community in the Eino Rav and the Chemes Hatzibor, he will not see the the redemption, so to speak, of the of the of is, is, is an agent for the congregation. And here the Tzibor is referring to the Jewish community. You see, the Jews are not only an individual people. We have a group, and the Jewish group has to be protected at all times. If God forbid, and it happens quite often uh, throughout the years, that uh, the Jews are persecuted, it's not one individual Jew that's persecuted, it's all Jews are persecuted. And nobody should be complacent. If he hears that Jews are persecuted someplace else, in his locality, he shouldn't assume that... Children, when one finger hurts, the whole hand hurts. And you have to have this... All the Jews you got to have that empathy for a fellow Jew it's very difficult for a person that has not too many stresses in his life to appreciate that the, the will turns and that maybe today he is no danger and maybe, God forbid, and another day he may very be in danger or if he won't be in danger, maybe his children will be in danger. And it is very foolhardy for a, for a Jew to be separating himself from the Jewish community and assuming that it can't happen, or to his loved ones. So the part of the mission is admonishing us uh, that is not a proper procedure for her to do. Live an individualistic life without any of the welfare of the Jewish care for the Jewish people. That they don't consider helping the Jewish people as a primary concern. Unfortunately, unfortunately, is good is fine if the good is directed in the proper direction and the proper priority. But without any direction is, is, is ridiculous. It's like, for instance, you're going to go in, uh, in, in one direction, whereas it, uh, the priority is to take people that are not Jews that, that to go and take care of these types of acts. Uh, and they should concentrate on first taking care of their own, and then if they have additional uh, Resources, oh, fine. It's like your family starving and you're giving all your money to That's your right. Post. And then you work on the, uh, a further yeah. way. But uh, when you start, see, that's because they don't follow the halal. They are right. very well to you. I appreciate it. And uh, when you do it in an improper way, it, it leaves a bad taste all the way around. Because uh, there's no way in the world that you can justify spending that type of uh, proper direction. So that, that is misuse of, of, uh, of uh, power. It, it should not be there. So the first uh, thing is the person has the obligation to uh, help the Jewish community. This is the first obligation. We'll learn what the parts are doing further. Just a little on each point, but we will go with other positive picture. Then the next point, he says, I'll tell me about to bet on yourself until the, death, uh, the day of your death. It means, uh, he gives an example of what the Gemara always brings. He was the coin builder for 80 years, for, for himself, for his family, and everybody. And if he wasn't a complete righteous type, he never came out of there alive. And yet this man went in 80 years, and 80 times he came out alive. Yochanan, Cohen Gogo, he was the father of the Chashmah. You're asking a Shaila, you want a Shaila answer? Yes. During the first uh, temple, the first base of English, up to the time, uh, during the time of the first temple, the first temple that lasted, the second temple lasted about four and ten years, or twelve years, ten years, or twenty years. The second temple, after the second temple was built, um, was finally completed in 516 with by the time Alexander the Great came on the, on the scene, about 323 of the common, uh, the Jews started to get holistic ideas from the Greeks. And they started to become free of their religion. They began, then it became, the Cohen Gogo became wealthy overnight because he got a, a rake off on all the carbonos and everything. So it was, it became a political football. Bought and sold it. Who would pay the biggest price would be appointed to coin God Do you understand? Of course, he had to be a. He had to be a coin. <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was a bidding, an active bidding to go and get the, the, the plum, so to speak.
bees. So, and right after every young keeper, the office of Oingogo was open again. <laughs> every Russian figure is the same thing. But if you see them going down and they have this digital readout. 52 years later, they started to rebuild the second temple. You have, the, you have this, this phenomenon was such that they had a room that, that they used to call a room that the uh, room of the change, because every time, every year, would come a new room. But you named the room after the changing room. The first mister, Mr. like, uh, I'm getting like seven days before Yom Ben Godom Beso. We would separate the Kohen Godom from his household, and he would be isolated. Lishki's Palhedrin, to the room in the base of Mikdash called Palhedrin. And we prepared and another coin to be a substitute for him in case for some reason he wasn't able to function. This is even for the Sadiq. So that he wouldn't be able to uh, so uh, so uh, something that will uh, make him. Rabbi Yehuda said, We also prepare an extra wife for him uh, in case. Who are we talking about? <laughs> Why would his wife die if he's the one who. He's separated for seven days. He went away from his house for seven days. Right. His marriage is broken up. He's going to come home after right. that. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> he's isolated there. So this is what the voter was. The, he had to do it all personally. I think so. For himself, he has to do it for his household. Yeah. And even at that particular time, he may have to go on engage. We must understand one thing. You are now beginning to learn Gomorrah. And Mishnah is, is packed with concepts that the Gomorrah explains. So when you learn Mishnah, obviously you're going to meet a lot of concepts. You have a lot of questions. You just have to be patient a little bit. Okay. You understand? It was keen and low. We even preparing another wife that would prepare for him. She never dies. Ad Beso. He's got to go and see, uh, seek uh, atonement for himself and for his house. Household. Beso to Ishto. His household, that's his wife. That's referring to his wife. Not that she's big as a house, it just means that the third home, his home. So the Chachomim was told there's no end to these things that you can worry about. You can worry about this, you can worry about that. People are going to drop dead all over the place. You're going to have to prepare for this, you can prepare for that. There's no uh, One of the things that the Chachomim frowned upon is making contingencies from things that would never happen or very seldom happen. Yeah. Because I could have a nocturnal discharge and he could be a puzzle to do yeah, this. But it doesn't mean that every young keeper's wife's going to kick the bucket. That's okay. a humming disappear yeah. of you. And they yeah. say, no, you don't have to prepare an extra yeah. wife for him. That's, okay. a, that's a remote possibility. We don't have to worry about that. As long as they prepared a substitute in case something happened to him. Yeah. So why do you have to prepare a wife as well? Because when he can go and say the same thing too. So, so, what do you need the... We'll put an extra substitute in case the uh, substitute wife does <laughs> Seven days, my fishing coin goddle, we, we, uh, we uh, separate the coin goddle, she was elbow. All this, all the, the service in the temple on Yom Kippur was only proper with the Yavoda, nobody else. Nobody else could substitute the coin, I share your Moshach also, and the uh, coin uh, that Parsha Zu, uh, not too long, and we learned this out days of uh, dedication when they dedicated the Mishkin. And they, they did the same procedure. From the, uh, 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 from the entrance of the tent of meeting, it shouldn't go out for seven days. See, by Australian, it's written afterwards. Gashir also got commanded to do the Kabir Alechem to seek forgiveness for you. When our rabbis learn out, also say, my support to do the Kippurim. This is the action to the Kippurim. Shaikoin. Asori fes aporo, because the coin that burns up, it does the avod. Afroshom and beisom shiva shomim. They both require a separation from their household seven days prior to the time they do that. Each one of those activities they had to separate from their uh, wives for seven days, uh, and the seven, uh, seven days of the dedication of the mishkan. And they would take this uh, this coin go to lishkas al hedra. I understand. Yeah, well, but this is a special. The um, officers of the king, the brethren, that's one explanation. They're called by a woman. They used to pay money, give money, in order to be, be able to uh, operate as a point. But also, they never finished their year. From this coffee, 
they would uh, be a new change every year. That's what I'm out, just like the change of the officers and the king. Changes yeah. every year on the guard. Dr. Negros, the zoo, therefore they call this room, this the, the room of change, where they're changing all the time. I don't know, the Rishoyimah. Who received the money that they would purchase? The, the people that were in a position to put them in the position. Who was in power that could put them in? What a and change? who would that be? That would probably be. They took over the... So there was a lot of uh, a lot of uh, bribery and corruption at that time. So the kings were in power. If the kings were also called, they should not have been. That's one of the reasons why the Gemara never, the Mishnah never mentions about Hanukkah, because um, resented the fact that the Kohanim had taken over the Malas. Because you have a wonderful father doesn't mean all of a sudden not because he from the other destruction. If there were happened to him some kind of nocturnal discharge, or if you worry about that, in relation to that it happens frequently, I call it's not frequent. We don't worry about it because if God forbid he died sometime before, he could have could be a gentleman. I remember, I remember I told you I used to dominate in the Torah synagogue. In the so there I there were months, there was about uh, 30 men that had Torah on him, just like over here by uh, Rosh Hashanah, because a lot of them came here. Yeah. So I felt comfortable there because I didn't have to go and pick up. There was always be somebody who protest in case something went out of line. Yeah. And then, you know, I, 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 I still feel like this when I go, when something goes wrong, and unfortunately, that's where it is, you get to be a reputation of being a troublemaker. There's men, much of Mishnayas right here in the city. The only thing you have to really be concerned about, I think, I'm telling Sheila, yes. is nothing leans on a Chumash. Chumash is above. You can't put but a I mean Tanai or a Gomorrah on a Chumash. What she means is Leaning. you're using the Torah, you're using the, the safer, the, safer the, the, the reason I only give respect to the Chumash, that I won't lean on a Chumash. Well, this is but it's not on the same level. Wait, wait. Your concept in the, than the whoa, whoa. Uh, so I'm in the I make on it. So that's improper. Well, when I was first entered to the issue, uh, I used one safer yeah, well, as a book as a book uh, right. other safer I was yeah, learning. Yeah. And he told me it is not a problem. Is but, it true that a person can like rest part of his some part of his body on the top of it. Well, if you're learning, it's no problem. How do you use it for? It's a comfortable height. <laughs> Wait a minute. Also, it's improper to have Keep a faith with those who sleep in the dust. I mean, what's what's difficult about this what's concept? What's your problem? What does it mean? We don't have. We don't have. God promises that if a person does His will and. Um, that's what everything he should be doing in the proper way all the way through his whole life. Not only will he help you and sustain you throughout your life, if you happen to be in a situation where you fall, he will allow you to rise up. If you happen to be in a situation where you're sick, he will allow you to become, God forbid, you are in a situation where you are a captive, he will see that you're free. If, God forbid, you are tied up, bound up, he will see that you're unbound. And he will not only fulfill his, his, his this bracha to you while you're alive, even if you are have a good track record and you become a tzaddik, even after you're dead, the promises he promises in relation to the dead, he will also fulfill. He will have a tzaddik amazing, and it will be a, well, speedily in our day. And it will, and we're, uh, there will be a final resurrection of all those that are righteousness, and there will be eternal life. No more any more wars, and no killings, or anything of that nature. And we'll all serve God, uh, and uh, not to be in His presence in the proper way. There's, there's nothing wrong. I, I mean, what, what, what was your uh, problem? God was well, very simple. First, first He mentions what you do in relation to the living. living. First, you, the first he sentence says, it says like this. You go, you sustain the living with kindness. That's a generalization. And then, and then you make res, uh, resurrect the dead with the great mercy. Now, this that generalizations. Now we're specifying uh, uh, particulars. 
What do we mean by a chesed? Then we say these words. So mechnoflim. These are the words. These are the things he does for those that are alive. And in relation to Machai, he does that for those that have passed on. In other words, God is faithful both in both all worlds, ways. all the way. There's no way in which God is ever uh, not living up to his commitments. Do you understand that? The no, is such that uh, that is part, you got something to add on. My part. <laughs> you got, because in this uh, Olam Azeh, we have two, two few things that we can depend on. Because everything else is a thick of flux, and everything else you really can't depend on. Isn't that Almighty that, God can you depend on. Isn't that why... And he is faithful all the way, not only to the end, beyond the end. He doesn't put trust in his holy ones because while they're alive, they're in a state of flux, and they could even... God so then that brings us to the next point in our mission. Uh, opportunity to get back to the shir. Don't worry about it. Tell me for the future. What, what do you want to know? Yeah. We were learning from that. No, listen, I remember a lot of times when Baruch Hashem, uh, a lot of Gomorrahs, a lot of times I put one Gomorrah on top of another, I'm looking for another Gomorrah, I you run out of room in front of me, and I'm just learning. I'm not actually, I'm not actually uh, using it for the rest, I'm just look, finding the source. It's all a temporary condition. It's not that where I'm just going, using it as a book rest for... You're not going to use it. He asked a question that in his house, he's got a set, set of... And he he has his Bernbaum sitter on top, resting on top of the proper. That's improper. Yeah, I put it on the either on by the side, side of it, or if you exactly. if you would come uh, sometimes, if we can ever get my house is filled with sporing and among uh, other things. So uh, we're always asking why. That's I'm why I'm asking which I need I need, I need room to to put the sporing. I need a bigger place where I can put the sporing. I remember, I remember <laughs> my <laughs> wife and I visited Rabbi Azuzah um, Rochov, who was a Gorn Olam, and I just visited him once, I only met him once in my life, and I was talking to some Indian, and I came to Baruch Hashem into his room, and it was a chiyas to come in there, with spore, all four walls with, with spore, and it was a beautiful thing, and if I live and be well, I'd like to have that too, because uh, there you can get it, take a safer and you can learn. This way I have sporing that I, I can't get to, I have to take them out of boxes. Yeah. Now, I, I wanted to, uh, I wanted my daughter to learn from uh, a shas kimura, but I didn't want her to use up the, uh, my, my, my shas that I, I use, usually use for reference, because if you use it all the time for learning, it'll apart. fall apart. It's nothing terrible about yeah. that, yeah. but then you would have to yeah. replace yeah. it. This way, I if you use the others for him that I have accumulated over the years, Baruch Hashem, not only my father, Olu Shalom, and I, books, books uh, holy books. And we we have accumulated over the years. Hopefully, if I ever get a place of yeshiva of my own, I'll bring all these old for and put them in the bookcase and learn, just like we've got here. And you'll have it all available for anybody who wants to learn it. Or maybe we'll draft Moshe here. Yeah. Now he's a big time expert in it. <laughs> in almost the middle of uh, Mishnah, I'm going to read the Martin Hora. Don't forget about yourself the day of your death. Remember, we learned about, we said, Pushona for 80 years, it became it was going Godo. It was so fast of Suduki, at the end, he became a Suduki. A uh, Suduki did not believe in the uh, Torah Shabbat Peb, Begin, uh, beginning of the Reform Conservative movements. First time that this happened. It should never happen again. Uh, but this is what happened. He became a free thinker. If he sees it coming, that you, you're going to be there? should dead. take your life. I mean, let's say you don't no, want to be coming, no. but how do you prevent it? If you just how do you prevent it? This great man. Oh, this is the question here. Yeah. Why is it that this happens? That a person, after all these years, after right. 80 years of being a yeah. coin right. at the end of his time, this is a sign of that what? you can never be complacent oh. about your religiosity. Oh. I know what you're saying. God says, generally speaking, when a person struggles to fight the Yetzirah for a majority of his life, then God will step in and help him. Now that's a generalization. That is not a particularization. It may be in, in, in the individual case, he needs God's help until all the days of his life. 
He is not in this generalization uh, thing. Some people assume that because the general rule is that if you majority of your life you're a tzaddik, so you make it by uh, some, no, not osmosis, uh, by, uh, no, no, uh, by what do you call it? Well, 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 this is not the case yeah, in relation to what? what? No, no. She's saying no, clinical Please. please. It's, it's, you understand that? And we are telling in this area, there is no room for complacency. A person cannot, first of all, as Chazal will tell us, first uh, Israel, I'd like to learn inside, but I'll just tell you outside first. He'll say, uh, a person can depend on his uh, righteousness and in his how he successfully has been up to now in relation to becoming a righteous type. That's fine, good. You now don't make the assumption that for you got it made and you don't have to go <laughs> and work on it anymore. No way whatsoever. And say, for instance, you've learned, you learned to learn God's Torah for over 40 years now. And uh, I assure you, if God forbid I stopped learning, I wouldn't know. It would go away from me. There's no way in the world that it stays with you. You've got to persist. In, in learning Torah, you got to persist in trying to be a righteous type. You can't just say to yourself, I've tried all these years, and uh, I even get uh, 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 you're saying I'm a big time tzaddik, and uh, I don't have to worry about too much about the shuba and everything. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, if I get that, my feelings never. All right, what can you do? That's why he understands why I have to really be. Uh, so when I'm admonishing uh, you over here that you should be a better Jew, I'm really speaking to myself. I'm speaking to myself. I'm calling, I'm yelling out to heaven. To, to, and don't, uh, I'm not making the assumption that I got it made. I, I, I'm just starting. I'm just starting being a decent type. They uh, say, listen, you got a long way to go. That's a wonderful thing. I don't get big-headed about it. And I appreciate it. I think it's wonderful that they're to point out to me what's very obvious. We're not permitted. We're not permitted to eat it. We're not permitted. Even Melvin Garty in the, in the minor says that Tayak Mishra Shemarti, I fulfilled all 613 commandments. That's an awful lot of commandments to fulfill. Yeah. And Jacob, our it's forefather, is not a liar. He says he fulfilled them. He fulfilled it. Some only a lady. Oh, I, I know quote. you can quote, but I, I interpret what I you're saying. Quote. He did all the... I will quote your, your Sefer. You gave me the Hasidic tale yeah, of Hasidim. Yeah. When a person is going among idols, it is prohibited at that point to think Torah. To think Torah. And when you're in such a position where you can withhold the thoughts of Torah, yeah. for some people it's no problem at all. <laughs> they do it all the time. Right? <laughs> in Madriga, where you are thinking it toward the way you should be, <laughs> it does become a problem to turn it off I because it, it, it is, you know, it's very difficult. Very difficult. Yeah, uh, very difficult. <laughs> and so that uh, Yaakov, you know, could live in Lovin's house for four, uh, 20 years yeah. and not think Torah while he was in among all those idols. Only when he was uh, among the sheep. Oh. And, be, and be, yeah. so he was given credit as he fulfilled the entire Torah Kula that he was able to go oh. and observe he this particular the mitzvah of serving God must be done with the completest degree <laughs> of purity <laughs> and holiness that a human being is capable of doing. All this. Now, in order to come to that degree of purity and holiness, a Jew has to dedicate himself and discipline himself to a very long degree of disciplinary actions that will bring him to, to that degree, uh, degree of control. Talking. You understand? Yeah. And this is the true service of God. If you can truly say that you serve God with every fiber of your being, you are in fact serving God in a proper way. But if God forbid you're not serving him with that degree of intensity, you may not be serving him as well as you should be serving him. Now, uh, Yaakov Eno had done all this, and so while well, you learn pshat, you know, right after that, immediately after that, he says to God, I am too small for all the kindnesses you've given me. He was not complacent in assuming that because he had touched all the bases, that therefore he had it made. 
God would certainly protect a, a righteous type, no problem there. He always made the assumption and he was always fearful, God forbid, either God had paid him back for the righteousness he had done, or God forbid, uh, there had crept, uh, crept up among his household, among himself, some kind of improperty, uh, improper conduct that he, he did not notice and it may have made not proper what his record. A Jew must always be very careful never to make the assumption that he has completely done everything correctly at all times and he has no room for improvement. At all times, uh, eternal vigilance is the price of a proper religious type. You cannot rest on your laurels in assuming that somehow, because up to this point you've done a pretty good record, you've avoided most of the mistakes that you could have avoid, uh, avoided, and you've done most of the nice things that you could have done, that necessarily, you will necessarily continue in that way. Yes. On the 613 mitzvahs, is there is that actually a physical count of 613 or could one mitzvah be called like two mitzvahs well, there are different lists of these mitzvahs you remember we learned just we learned about tomim tiei you should be perfect with the lord your god and you recall uh, that i told you there was a dispute between the ramban Nachnides, and the ramban uh, maimonides the ramban uh, says it's a mitzvah say it's a, one of the uh, 613 commandments one of the positive commandments of the Torah whereas the Rambam does not enumerate him among the 613 at all because the Rambam the discussion yeah, of we this have, young man with the Russian yeah. the, exactly what you're saying that was what the young man had told the Russian yeah. that he, he doesn't enumerate it as a mitzvah yeah alright all right. now uh, the, uh, the Malbim tells us this, exactly he explains, explains to it this way, the Malbim says the reason that the Rambam does not enumerate among the 630 commandments does not mean that you should not do it or it's, it's not a proper thing for you to do or that you should avoid doing it, God forbid. The Rambam is just as much as uh, desirous that a person should be complete with God as the Rambam. That's not the problem. The, the Rambam learns out from the Sifri, commentary on the Chumash that says, if you will be complete with, uh, with your service of God, you will be considered a portion of God's portion. So in effect, the, the Rambam, Amenides, tells us that this is a condition. If you will do this, God will consider you a part of his portion. And it's not necessarily a commandment. It's condition. This is what you would result in your, in this would result in there. If you are complete in your attitudes and in your service of God, you will be uh, completely within the uh, protection of God. But whether it is man or whether it is a condition, it's an, it's an essential Obviously, it's an essential, essential for, for a perfect service of God that a person cleave to God and do his role as best we can. Mitzvah that you get two mitzvahs for? Is there a mitzvah that you do, which is like a double mitzvah? In other words, is, do you have to do 613 individual mitzvahs? Yes, yes there, but there are different lists. Who, what are in the 613? Some say others are in others, but each one counts as 613. for various psukim in the Chumash. And which 613, they have different lists. Sometimes, Pauline Eder, if we have time, we can go over those lists. We can go over the Rambam. There you find the 613 lists. Maybe we can do it. Maybe but you can. I don't know who di disagrees with the Rambam on well, some of the mitzvahs saying that it's not. Perhaps if he, did, if he, uh, he must, must put something, something else. else. So that works out the exactly. individual 613 yeah, every day. Obviously, but my name on our time, many of them are not operative. Is there one, if you do one thing, it counts like two mitzvahs. In other words, must you do the 600 in individual 13 every day? Uh, Moshe, you took back one of your sporing. Now, now's the time. Bring back the, the we, we, I want to Xerox the first eight of the mitzvahs enumerated by uh, the Hobbit's Chaim. And you will okay. see in the first eight, to our time. Yeah. To our time the first eight, Blin Eder, bring it, and so he can Xerox it, so we yeah. can learn it and share. Right. Because you will see among the eight, yeah. certain ones where he says they're really not mitzvahs, according to some authorities, uh -huh. uh, because they are included among other things. So it's like we'll learn it inside, 
And that's it. It's more of a we have any shadows like, in regards to what you are. If you bring back one of your sport, maybe I'll find one or another. I must still. Let bring the safer and I'll see if. The, but I'd like to. Yeah. I can, there, so anytime somebody does something improper, besides the doing, besides the thing that's improper, there's also a uh, mitzvah that you're supposed to fear God, which goes which goes along with every with everything yeah. you do. So, so if you're going to do something, if, if yeah. say you steal, Hashem, then you're also not fearing God, which is also. Oh yeah, what well, kill more than one mitzvah at a time? This is what you're talking yeah, about. In one action, you can yeah. fulfill or violate more than one mitzvah or one, one. In other words, this is possible. This, uh, uh, this one, in other words, at one time, we have sometimes a uh, more than one violation at the same action. The same action results in, in a numerous vi violation. And sometimes the same action re results in numerous uh, observances. But it doesn't mean to imply that each individual mitzvah is not a separate and distinct of itself. But you can fulfill at the same time several at the same time. That's his mitzvah. We'll eventually total up to 613. Yes, if, uh, theoretically. Theoretically. Uh, it's not anything you can't do something like so uh, In law, it was just, I broke down and read the little... So it was saying how the 31 positive and... Pro prohibitions that you could, God forbid, violate by saying Lashon Hara. You can fulfill the mitzvahs? By not saying because this is if in a situation, Lashon if in a situation was. where you that you you don't violate something that you could have violated, you get a reward for abstention. That's great. like eating meat from an animal, taking a raw piece of uh, yeah. life. You're not doing it. Yeah. You yeah. Do yeah. it. So this is included in the 613 yes. that you're supposed to do every day. You're not supposed to do it. Fulfill this particular negative part. You see, and, and even people that unfortunately. Uh, and they never think of doing a mitzvah in their whole they, life. They, they're very, uh, they are, they are uh, uh, thinkers. They don't thinking. think about doing yeah, mitzvahs. Yeah, yeah. Even they fulfill mitzvahs. Right. Of the 365. Inadvertently, yeah. For instance, they, they never think about Torah while in the washroom. <laughs> <laughs> Best thing is they just sit there and uh, <laughs> stay there. They will never do anything so more. I don't know. We, we never really get very far. In this we got very far. I think we covered. We went into Yuma. We yeah. went there, even discussed the sitter. Yeah. Well, we will continue, believe that, with this uh, the, the, the next time we learn here. It's quite a good.